Hey, it's the Nerdy Sports Fan. We're talking Week 9 NFL action. So that means you should hit up the Nerdy Sports Fan Weekly if you haven't been because we're starting our opening power ranking now that we're halfway through the season. But let's get into this game. We have Tampa going to visit the Seattle Seahawks. Two diametrically opposed teams. We have a very, very good team with a strong quarterback play that's extremely consistent, possible MVP candidate on one side, and you have a very, very bad team with a first-year coach who's trying to rebuild around a quarterback who uh, one week looks like a pro bowler and the next five looks like an absolute chump. Um, yeah, super fun, right? So... Um, Seattle's going to win, okay? Just, it's not going to be pretty. Tampa Bay had their, you know, their shine on last week, but, you know, this isn't the competition that you're going to do that against, okay? Uh, Seattle is a very well-run team. Uh, Pete Carroll has won a Super Bowl with this team. Russell Wilson has won a Super Bowl. These guys know what it takes to win. Um, they are the obvious leaders. Uh, Bobby Wagner is playing lights out as always. I mean, this guy could be Defensive Player of the Year if he continues on this path. Um, there are players that have flashier statistics like Stefan Gilmore and Nick Bosa. But man, Wagner just brings it every single game and sets the tone for this defense. If it wasn't for him, the defense would be far worse. Um, he's the best linebacker in the game, without question. So, I love the leadership of the Seattle Seahawks. I wish my team had the quality leadership that the Seattle Seahawks do. Um, because of that leadership, they are never, ever, ever in a position where they are snuck up on by a trap game. Okay? Leadership is what matters to make sure people stay on point and do their damn job, even if they think they are just going to school the other team. So that's why I don't ever think Seattle is in danger of losing to far inferior teams like Tampa Bay. Um, in this game, keep in mind that Tampa Bay's strength lies in their run defense, and uh, they have some very good pass rush from Shaq Barrett, but that's definitely tailed off since the beginning of the season. Um, Seattle relies on their run. So this is a matter of strength versus strength. The running game of Seattle going up against the run defense of Tampa. The difference in this is they have Russell Wilson. And if anybody is going to be able to make up for a deficiency out of the running game, it is Russell Wilson. He distributes the ball extremely well. He will force this defense to stay honest. They will have to do so much to stop his acumen in the passing game that they're going to be a little more lax in the running game because of it. They're not going to be able to dedicate the personnel to the running game that they need to to stop Chris Carson, who, by the way, is a beast. So I would expect Chris Carson to do well in this game because he's Chris Carson and he plays for Seattle. The way the scheme works and the way he fits within the scheme, he's always consistently going to get points. They're going to use him as a red zone running back. They're going to throw him the ball. He's going to run a lot. Um, he has pushed Rashad Penny out of the picture entirely. Um, and I called this at the beginning of the season. So, you know, you should have checked out the fantasy football top 10 list for running backs. Um, but yeah, uh, Carson's going to get his in spite of Tampa's strength of a running defense just by sheer volume. So he's a running back too, but you're definitely starting him still. Um, as far as Tampa goes, who knows what the running back room is going to produce. Uh, Ronald Jones is still the uh, odds-on leader, but, I mean, it's still crap. So nobody from Tampa uh, running game should be thought of. Um, the real questions are Jameis Winston, uh, Godwin, and Mike Evans. Last week, 
Mike Evans. Two weeks ago, Godwin. Three weeks ago, Godwin. Four weeks ago, Godwin. Just Godwin is the safety net for Jameis Winston. He just happened to have such a favorable matchup on the opposite side um, that Mike Evans beasted people. So I think both are solid options. I really do. But Godwin's the more consistent. So as long as he's healthy and in the lineup, Godwin is the dude that you need to have as your primary. Um, he's an every week wide receiver one. Mike Evans is an every week two. Um, they're always behind. And Jameis Winston, in spite of all of his flaws, can definitely huck a deep ball to a guy who can beat double coverage um, in Mike Evans. And he will consistently be able to throw slants and pepper in a lot of targets to Godwin as his safety blanket. So those two things are always going to be there. It's just a matter of, does he make the smart play and throwing the ball away instead of trying to make something happen with his legs and getting a sack? Um, does he turn the ball over in those sacks? Does he make an ill-advised throw into coverage in the middle of the field that produces a turnover? Um, his accuracy is great one week, terrible the next. His decision-making is great one week, terrible the next. Those are the issues with Mr. Winston, and they haven't fixed them. So get a new quarterback this offseason, please. Um, but yeah, um, Evans and Godwin are going to get theirs because of the quarterback you have. So definitely keep them in, their line, in your lineup. Um, on the Seattle side, the only receiver worth starting week to week is Tyler Lockett. Um, Russell Wilson does a great job distributing the ball. Because of that, you never really know who's going to get the best shine. Uh, but Lockett is just too talented, and he's the most consistent target for Russell Wilson. So he's going to average 10-plus points all the time. Um just they don't have a true number one, and it's not because of Lockett's talent. It's because of what Russell Wilson can do so effectively, which is distribute the ball evenly. Um, Russell Wilson is a QB1. He might be the best QB option. No, he is. He's the best QB option in fantasy football this week because Tampa's defense is so weak against the pass, and he is so damn good. So uh, if you're going against Russell Wilson this week, I am so sorry. I really am, because he's going to put up 50 points from the QB position, and it's going to be very difficult to beat any team starting him. Um, that's what I got. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the line. Uh, Six-point favor uh, for Seattle. I think that's trash. I think they're going to win by 10 at the very minimum. Um, they have some bounce back to get. they got a bad taste in their mouth still from that Ravens game, and um, they're going to take it out on some inferior teams. Okay. Uh, Tampa Bay is just coming into town, and they're going to run into a buzzsaw. So um, hit up the rest of the videos for more sit-start advice, and hit up the Nerdy Sports Fan Weekly for our opening round of power rankings.